whenever we're told we have to study something, for some reason, we always want to study something else. I can think of countless situations where I was in a class, I had to do homework for that class, I had to study for a test, I had responsibilities, I was taking a college level course and I had to perform because my grade depended on it. And that's no fun. So I wanted to do something else. It doesn't matter how much I like the subject. If the teacher would assign, you know, 10 homework problems from a complex variables book, because he assigned those problems, I wanted to do the other ones. It, it's like this weird thing where we never want to study what we're told to study. It's always more fun to do something else. I don't know why. I don't know why, but that's how it's always been for me. And I think for a lot of people, it's the same. I think it could be because there's pressure involved. So in this video, I want to talk about how to take that pressure off. And we're going to talk specifically about calculus. I'm going to give you a specific resource that is actually extremely inexpensive because I checked the price is low and it has everything you need in it and it's going to make you better at calculus. It's not a course. It's not a new book. It's an old book. It's an old book that I haven't really talked about too much. I think I maybe I talked about it in, in some other video uh, briefly. And I know that when I talked about it, some people left comments about this book. And I was shocked because I didn't expect people to recognize the book because it's an old book I got for less than $10. And as of right now, I checked, there are several copies available and they're all less than $10. I saw some for $5. But of course, you know, prices vary. Here's the book. And it's just an old book on calculus. It's called Calculus with Analytic Geometry. It's a textbook. Look how thick that is. Super thick. It smells amazing. Second edition by Earl Swakowski. This book has everything. It has everything that you would need to know if you were a student in Calculus 1, 2, or 3 in the U.S. In fact, it has more than what you would cover in class. No teacher covers everything. It's just, there's never enough time. It's, it's too much. It's a standard book. It's got good explanations. It's got good exercises. We'll take a brief look later in this video at the contents of this book. But it's basically got everything you need. So why would you need this book if you already have a book? Since it's so similar to other books, since it has the same topics as, you know, the popular books, like the one by Stewart or the one by Larson, why would you need this one? Well, because it's different and it's old. And I think it makes it exciting, at least for me. You know, if you have homework, you probably have online homework. You're probably told you have to do all this online homework and this is what you have to do. But honestly, what sounds more fun? Doing the online homework or working through Swakowski's old edition, this is the second edition, of Calculus with Analytic Geometry. I mean, this is way more fun, right? I, I don't know why it just sounds more appealing. There's something about the physical book and, you know, unfortunately, physical books, you know, they're on their way out. They are. I remember when um, online homework first was becoming a thing. And it's good. I, I liked online homework. Uh, it makes it easier for teachers because you don't have to grade the homework. And it's good for students because the students get immediate feedback. You know, you type in the answer, you know if it's wrong. I I'm pretty sure most colleges in the U.S., have online homework. I don't know how it is in other countries. I'm curious if you live outside the US, do you have online homework? Let me know, I'm, I really have no clue. But for classes like calculus, you know, online homework is, is where it's at. So doing problems from traditional textbooks is kind of a thing of the past. And I think that makes it even more exciting. But yeah, this is, this is a wonderful book. It's got answers to the odd numbered exercises. And it will give you different explanations, right? Because it's a different book. And it's cheap. So I purposely looked for a book that was cheap. Because I have other calculus books and some of them are kind of pricey. Like the one by Lighthold. That, that's, that's pricey. It's a great book. The one by Lewis Lighthold, Calculus. But it's a little bit pricey. This one is super inexpensive. And it, it brings back that excitement. That excitement that you get when you're learning something because you want to learn it. 
And I think that makes it better. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do your online homework if you have homework. Obviously, do your homework. That should take priority over reading uh, this. I believe it's a 1979 copy. Let me double check. It's kind of funny. I have the date. Yeah, 19, I have a date memorized. 1979 uh, copy of Swakowski's Calculus. It's funny that I knew the date. Um, it's not like I was looking at this book today, uh, but I've looked at it before. And somehow I remembered the date. Maybe because I looked it up on Amazon. Because I did find it for a few dollars. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a good way to rekindle your love for math. And it, it's strange that we're that way. It's strange that we always want to study something else, you know, and it's always been that way for me. I always want to do something different, always. You know, if someone tells me, oh, you have to work on this complex variables homework, even though, even though I was really looking forward to studying complex variables, once I'm in the class, once I have that pressure of homework, once I have that pressure of tests, it's like, no, no, I don't want to do this anymore. No, I want to go back and do something else. Another common thing that people want to do is they want to go back and review. And that's because it's easier to review. So you could do that with this, right? If you're, if you're taking calculus, this should follow exactly what you're doing. I mean, you should be able to find a section in this book that corresponds to whatever you're studying in your classes whether it be Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, it's very, very standard. It's very modern. It's got a whole chapter on infinite series. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Let's go ahead and just take a really quick look at this book um, so you can see what it's about. By the way, I'll, I'll leave links in the description in case you want to check out the book because I did find it uh, in case you want to look at it uh, and buy it. It's very inexpensive right now. Again, super cheap. I know I always say stuff like you can get this book for a few dollars and then, then I go look when I post the video I'll go look because you know, I have to write up the description for the video. And so I'll look on Amazon. I'll, I'll search the book. I wonder if this book is available. A lot of times I'll make a video. I don't even look for the book. I'm like, oh, no, the book is out of print. I'm like, great. One copy available, $90. So this time that's not the case. It, it's there. I, I, as of right now, as of this very moment, there are tons of copies of this book and it's super cheap. But um, yeah, I know it happens a lot. But this time I, I decided to do some planning. I decided to find the book. And, and look it up before making the video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this behemoth of a book by the legendary Swakowski. Calculus with Analytic Geometry by Swakowski. Look how thick this is. Let's just take a really brief look at the content so you can see how standard it is. It really coincides with everything. Earl W. Swakowski, Marquette University. And this one is from 19, 1979, right? Really, really old book. And apparently this is a popular book. Uh, you know, people have used this book. I've had subscribers here talk about this book in the comments. So prereqs for calculus, limits and continuity of functions. So that's the same order that you would encounter in a calculus one class, the derivative, Applications of the derivative, all really standard topics, local extrema, Rawls theorem, the first derivative test, concavative cavity in the second derivative test, all, all very organized, all super standard. It's pretty much very similar to every other modern book, right? So you might say, well, why would you want another book that has the same topics? Well, it gives you a different perspective. And as I said before, it makes it more fun to have something different. It's got a uh, Chapter seven is on analytic geometry. That's kind of cool. And then a whole chapter here on um, exponential and log functions and the derivatives, other transcendental functions. Okay. Additional techniques and applications of integration. Everything there looks pretty standard. Indeterminate forms and improper integrals in Taylor's formula. Again, quite standard infinite series. Just reading everything there, everything looks very normal. Again, very, very um, in line with what's taught today. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Yeah, everything is matching up. Kepler's laws, sometimes that's an optional section in a lot of books. Partial differentiation, multiple integrals, it's Calc 3 stuff, some more Calc 3 stuff. And then it's got some differential equations, as a lot of other modern books do. And it's got some induction in the appendix, appendix uh, theorems on limits and indefinite integrals, and then the trig functions in another appendix. 
then has answers to the odd numbered problems. Let's take a look at the answers so you can see it does actually have answers to um, those odd numbered problems at the end of the book. So you see it does have those answers. As far as the layout of the book, um, it's a fairly modern book. It, it doesn't have as much color in pictures as a lot of the really, really new books, right? This is from 1979, so um, there's definitely less uh, colors and pictures. It tends to use this notation for derivatives. Right, that's the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent, and then here they go through and they use the quotient rule to come up with the hyperbolic cosecant squared. So it has examples, as you can see, and it has plenty of exercises uh, in each section. So doesn't hold back. Some exercises um, are harder than others. Uh, I would say it has a good mix. Um, here's some definite integrals. Difficulty seems, well, sorry, indefinite integrals. Difficulty seems pretty simple. So not a particularly hard book or anything like that, just a standard book, which I think would be a good supplement. So yeah, nice book, right? Uh, it's just a solid calculus book uh, written by Swakowski. I'll try to leave links in the description so you can, I definitely will leave links so you can check it out. So uh, I found this one cheap. Also, if you do want to learn calculus another way, um, I do have courses on my website. Check it out, mathsorcerer.com. The courses are actually on the Udemy website, but if you decide to buy them, please use the links in my website. Also, if you're not a subscriber and you want to subscribe, uh, subscribe if you want to. But yeah, cool, all right? Swakowski, what a thick book. Prindle, Weber, and Schmidt. It's got a cool line on it. Yeah, my copy is really old. And the copies that uh, I will link are also really old, right? They're all old copies. Who knows what you'll find in your copy. Sometimes you find old notes and stuff. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck. Keep doing math.